Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and in this video, we're going to discuss the derivative of an inverse trig function. Suppose we are asked to derive y equals arc sine of x, or y equals inverse sine x. Well, in order for us to find such a derivative, we would need to know the derivative rule. Let's derive such a rule using a two-column proof format. So in this problem, we're going to find the derivative y equals arc sine of x by filling in this proof. Step one is the given, y equals arc sine x. Step two says take the sine of both sides and then draw a representative triangle. So let's start by taking the sine of the left side, leaving us with sine y. When I take the sine of the right-hand side, I get the sine of the arc sine of x. Taking the sine of the arc sine of x is very similar to squaring a square root. These two functions are inverses of each other and essentially cancel each other out. So if I'm taking the sine of the arc sine of x, I'm simply left with x. Now I'm going to go over to the side where that little triangle is. And I'm going to work with what I just wrote down, which is that the sine of y is equal to x. So I'm going to make y one of the acute angles of this right triangle, y degrees in fact. And the sine is x or x over 1. The sine of this angle, which is opposite over hypotenuse, will be x over 1. If I use the Pythagorean theorem, I can figure out the missing side of this right triangle. And that's going to leave me with the square root of 1 minus x squared. So again, in establishing y as our reference angle, and using the property opposite over hypotenuse, and more specifically x over 1 in this case, we're able to figure out what the third side of the right triangle is using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's move on to step number 3 of our proof. Differentiate with respect to x. Well, if I take the derivative of the left-hand side with respect to x, I'm going to end up getting cosine of y times dy dx, or the cosine of y times y prime. On the right-hand side, the derivative of x is simply 1. In step 4, we're told to isolate y prime. This will leave us with y prime equals 1 over cosine y. In step 5, we're instructed to use the reciprocal identity. 1 over cosine is the same as secant y. Back from geometry, secant is the ratio of hypotenuse to adjacent. So with that in mind, and interacting with the triangle that we drew off to the side, we're going to get that y prime equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, great. Let's go on to the final slide. Okay, so now we're on slide number two, where we're going to look at our second and final example. This one is a little bit more difficult. It has a little bit of a twist. In number two, we're asked to find the derivative of y equals arc sine 2x. Again, we're going to be working in a two-column proof format. So starting with the given, y equals arc sine 2x. In step two, we're told to take the sine of both sides and then draw a representative triangle. So taking the sine of the left side, we get sine y. And taking the sine of the right side, we get the sine of the arc sine of 2x, which is simply just 2x. And we talked about why that is on the other slide. Now working with what we just wrote down, the sine of y equals 2x, we're going to go off to the side and work with this representative triangle. We're going to pick one of the acute angles and call it y, y degrees. And from the perspective of that reference angle, we can label the sides opposite and hypotenuse. And this down here will be adjacent. So the sine of our angle y is equal to 2x, which I'm going to think about as 2x over 1. I'm going to place the 2x in the position of the opposite, and I'm going to place the 1 in the position of the hypotenuse. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can come up with an expression for the adjacent length, or 1 minus 2x squared. This is the same as the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. In step 3, we're instructed to differentiate with respect to x. If I differentiate sine y with respect to x, I get cosine y 
times dy dx, or cosine y times y prime. Differentiating 2x with respect to x leaves us with just 2. In step 4, we're told to isolate y prime. That gives us y prime equals 2 over cosine y. Using the reciprocal identity, we can rewrite this as y prime equals 2 secant y. And now if we refer back to our representative triangle off to the side, we can come up with an algebraic ratio. y prime is going to equal 2 times our expression for secant, which is hypotenuse over adjacent, or 1 over the square root of 1 minus uh, 4x squared. So if we look at the two examples that we did together, in the first problem we ended up with the derivative of arcsine of x being 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. In the second question, the one that we just did, we, are, we found that the derivative of arcsine 2x is 2 over the square root of 1 minus 2x squared, which of course is the same as the square root of 1 minus 4x squared, but writing it like this might make a little more sense. So my question to you is, could you come up with your own rule in general for taking the derivative of arcsine of u? So see if you can make some connection with the originally stated problem and the derivative that we ultimately got for the first problem, for the second problem, and then see if you can come up with your own rule for the third problem.